Your attention, masters, mistresses. All systems functional for the Everything Geek podcast. Hey, this is Rich McDonald, and I play Commander David Mason on Call of Duty Black Ops 2. And you're listening to Everything Geek Podcast. It's James Arnold Taylor, the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Master Pro Cool in Star Wars The Clone Wars, and you're listening to Everything Geek. The podcast. Hey, it's Leif Gamfert. I played Uncle Ben's killer in The Amazing Spider-Man, and you're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. Hello, I'm Simon Fisherbecker. You probably know me better as Dorian Moldovar from Doctor Who, or the Fat Friar from Harry Potter. And this is Everything Geek Podcast. Face it, Tiger. You just hit the jackpot with the Everything Geek Podcast. You're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast, bringing you interviews from your favorite films and TV shows every week, and all of the latest news. Here's your host, Rory Williamson. Hello everyone, you're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. I'm your host Rory, and joining me today is a very special guest. We have Zach Perlman, who stars as the voice of Snotlout Jorgensen in Dragon's Race to the Edge and Dragon's Riders of Burke, and it also played Zach in the Virginity hit Andre and Mulaney, Neil in Shameless, Davis in The Intern, and Jake Hartwright in The Inbetweeners. How are you today, Zach? I'm great, how are you? Very good, thanks. It's a pleasure to have you on the podcast today. Oh, thanks. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, so getting right into my questions for you, Zach, for some of our listeners that may not be familiar with your background, can you tell us how you got into acting? Yeah, um, I saw, you know, I've been acting since I was a kid, kind of local theater in in Michigan where I'm from. Um, And then I saw the movie Superbad and kind of was inspired to take a big leap in my life. and weirdly saw an audition on a website for a Will Ferrell, Adam McKay produced movie, auditioned, got the movie. Uh, that was the virginity hit. And I've just continued and and kind of done the done the acting thing since then. So it was all me uh, deciding that I just wanted to do it. And if working with Will Ferrell on your first project isn't, you know, the inspiration to get into act, get fully into acting, I don't know what is really. Yeah, definitely, I agree. So, can you tell us how you were originally cast as the voice of Snotlout in Dragons Riders of Burke? Yeah, uh, I was working on a TV show, Breaking In, for an episode uh, with the creator Adam F. Goldberg, who wrote on uh the original how to train your dragon he wrote some of the script uh and um he they were actively looking for a replacement for snot Lout. and it kind of just happened organically that he was like oh you know you kind of sound like jonah and i was like oh okay and um uh, <laughs> originally i thought i was because it was a replacement but they didn't tell me who i was doing an impression of jay baruchel on set and I thought I was going to go in and do Jay Baruchel. And then they were like, no, we want you to do Snotlout. And, uh, you know, at first I was a little nervous being that I had a kinship to Jonah Hill. I, like, loved his acting. And uh, I was a, a short little portly dude. <laughs> and I, I was afraid of being Jonah Hill light at the time in my life. Um, but the truth is, is, like, pretty much since day one they've let me kind of take my own uh, way with Snotlout and I became very connected with the character so it was it was an audition process just like anything else but it was kind of cool that it all happened from the original writer of the movie yeah absolutely and I mean that's the tricky thing isn't it as well you know replacing another actor because you're kind of like should I try and sound a bit like him but then it can sometimes just sound like you're doing an impression of them whereas yeah. it's be- in some cases it's better if you kind of do your own take on the character if that makes sense totally and and that's the kind of beauty of this show is they've let me do my own take on Snotlout 
Absolutely. Were you ever concerned how the fans would feel, though? You know, whether they would warm up to your portrayal as well after Jonah Hill did the movies, of course. Um, you know, it's so, it's so funny. I when we started all this, we were expecting 13 episodes, and then it was like, adios. We we did not know it was going to be uh, the kind of phenomenon that it has been. Um, so I would say that it was never a concern. My biggest concern was making sure that Snatlout came through as more than just a bully, I would say. Absolutely. And so I... I certainly now am very excited to hear what fans think because it's it's it has a life of its own and I mean people know more about the show than I'd say Art and Doug, <laughs> which is pretty wild. Um, but it is it, it, when we were just starting, I wanted to do right by Snotlout. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because. I mean, the great thing about the Dragons TV shows, of course, I mean, the films are pretty much focused on Hiccup and Astrid and Toothless, and maybe Stoic as well, whereas with mm-hmm. the TV show, we really get to explore all of the other writers as well in lots of detail, like even some episodes would be dedicated to, like, Snotlout or Fish Legs or the Twins. Um, yeah, and the Twins episodes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we all know what the Twins are like. Um, it's even yeah. crazier when they have whole episodes. But as you said, I mean, the most important thing about Snotlout is that he's not just seen as a bully, that he has other layers to him as well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Now, I believe Snotlout was also your first ever voiceover role. Correct me if I'm wrong. So we're... No, you're correct. Would you have considered that a challenge for you as well? Um, I think, honestly, I I had such kind of a snowball effect in my career where my first movie audition was the virginity hit. My first TV audition was for the in-betweeners. And then my first voiceover audition was for Dragons, where it's kind of, I just hit, I had three huge things in my life kind of hit one after another that I was just in awe. <laughs> I was never, um, I, I, I felt such a um, friendliness from DreamWorks and Cartoon Network that I was never scared. I was certainly, I certainly wanted to live up to everyone's expectations. But um, the great thing about working with a community of people uh, versus being someone like a stand up where you're kind of self reliant is that you will always feel feel the pressure lessened because other people are there and they want you to succeed. And so it kind of, it kind of takes a little bit of the pressure off. That said, I was so nervous. I was going to get fired (laughs) just constantly. I'd go into a record session and be like, Hey, how's everybody doing? Like just terrified. And then, um, everybody pretty much, we all warmed up to each other and got to know each other. And then that faded away and we were able to focus more. I was able to focus more on the performance than, uh, the performance outside of that. How many episodes would you say it took uh, before you felt you weren't going to get fired? It was episode, I, I'm not kidding. It was like episode four or five. I was in Florida and we were doing a record session um, like via satellite. And it was, a, it was in the early, it was in the early stuff. So I think season one. Or maybe season two. But what it was, I think it was season one. It was definitely season one. And it was, Snotlout kind of had to show, I think, man, I might be wrong, but Hook Fang's fire was going out and Snotlout was going to lose Hook Fang. And it was that, that emotion that I was able to bring through and we all kind of connected on this idea that Snotlout was more than just a bully. And it, it, it was then when we all kind of snapped in and realized like, you know, Snotlout isn't just this kind of side character who, whose, uh, you know, whole soul existence is reliance on Hiccup and Astrid, but he is a, a character with a lot of pain and, and, uh, he hides it really well. You know, he's a hard shell with a gooey center, as I describe him. That's a, and so it was, 
Yeah. That's a really great really description. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. And I should also say that was actually season two. I remember that bit, that yeah. episode. <laughs> Got it. So it was, it was season two. I guess season one was, it was a whirlwind. I do remember that. Season one was a whirlwind. It was just like seat of our pants. Everybody, I would go in for like an hour, two hours, and then it was getting to know everyone in, in, by season two that I felt comfortable. Yeah, it's really great. What would you say has been the highlight of voicing Snot Loud for you? Um, watching his character develop, for sure. Uh, being able to explore his, uh, you know, more empathetic side, his more, um, how do I say it? You know, he's an, uh, much like Shrek, he's an onion. Got to peel back layers. <laughs> and to see to see where his hurt and his pain comes from has been as an actor really really interesting because rarely do you get to spend that much time with a character that you start to dive into their backstory uh, and i think the first um winter games i want to say that's what they were where he kind of had to face hiccup and he was going to lose and hiccup let him win and he recognized that uh you know, it was really important for the Jorgensen's and l less so for Snotloud himself, but more for Snotloud's dad. Um, that's when I really got to start to feel for the character in a, in a different way. And uh, that's been a highlight is, is those moments of seeing him being vulnerable, you know, because he's such an arrogant person. Absolutely, and I have to admit I geeked out a little bit there because the episode you're referring to, Four Fest, is actually one of my favorites of the oh, of cool. the Cartoon Network one. Um, yeah. So I was just like, I I'm so happy that he brought that one up. I love that episode. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. It's it's definitely a good one, and I I do think it's the first time Hiccup Hiccup recognizes uh, where Snot Loud is coming from. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with you. Now, Snotlout obviously is such an interesting character because sometimes he's kind of very likable, other times he can be a love-to-hate character, usually when he's, you know, quarreling or competing with Hiccup. Um, what is it like to portray a character like him? Um, it, you, it's awesome. I mean, I'm not a bully in real life. I'd say I'm a pretty nice guy. And so being able to kind of stretch those wings is pretty fun. No pun intended. Um, and also you, I get to play, I, I am, I'd say, a very emotionally uh, intact person. I, I try to push my heart to my sleeves as much as possible. Um, so it's been fun to explore that aspect of Snout Loud. And then also to have uh, Doug and Art allow me to do that and then allow you know the writing to go in that direction rarely do you meet producers who are so invested in in characters like that absolutely i completely agree um but i do have to also say i thought that when i wasn't interviewing art and doug i would finally get away from the puns you know because i love puns myself but uh, I, yeah. i'm pretty sure that was a deliberate pun zach you can say if it was <laughs> you know it it i'm looking at a giant uh picture of toothless right now so i can't say that it didn't cross my mind <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's just say Art and Doug had a good influence on you. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Those guys are uh, uncles for sure. <laughs> they are full of dad jokes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, speaking of Art and Doug, of course we've had them on our podcast a couple of times, and they've mentioned that the cast, particularly T.J. Miller, who of course voices Tough Nut, are great at improvising lines and coming up with something that wasn't in the script. Um, so I wanted to ask you, considering you're one of the leads on the show, of course, can you think of any memorable lines that you improvised for Snot Loud during recording that wasn't in the original script? Yeah, I mean, it's every episode they, they'd let me... When Snotlout became the king of... You're, you're going to have to help me with the details. 
because I'm not a detail oriented person. But when he was to marry, um, her name starts with an A, I think. Astrid. No, no, not Astrid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. why am I thinking of Astrid? Okay, who else starts with uh, A? Let me think on it, this. It might not be an A. She. It was like when. Uh, Oh, you know what? The musical, the musical episode. They let me uh, improvise some of the songs, um, and they let me kind of. They let me improvise all the time. It's kind of fun. That's like the fun thing is like I know Snotloud so well that I and and Art and Doug do too. That when we come up with an idea, we'll just riff on it for five minutes because we're having so much fun. Um. I'm trying to think specifically what a great um, – oh, the – what's the episode where Snotlout was like basically drunk the whole time? <laughs> that, ho- that whole episode was pretty much improvised. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was sleep-deprived. Yeah, we, we that's the one. Deprived. Yeah. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. can't believe that, I that finally so remembered. <laughs> uh, that one was so much fun because – Truly, that is like we. I got to improvise pretty much that whole episode, just being silly as silly as possible in a character that is usually so, uh, you know, straightforward and mean. He got to be such a goofball, uh, and I am a goofball, so that was definitely me bringing myself in the snotlap. I'm sure a few dragons fan would like to know this. Which would you say is your favorite dragon in the How to Train Your Dragon franchise? I would be remiss to not say uh, um, my little nightmare. <laughs> I think there is no Snotlout without Hookfang, and there's no Zach Perlman without Hookfang. So I have to say Hookfang, but in I don't know. It's Hookfang or Toothless. Like the truth is, is I have cats, and so Toothless to me is he is like a cat dragon, but. Uh, I've said this before, there's a yin and yang thing going on with Snotlout and Hookfang. So, I gotta say Hooky, man. I gotta say it. Yeah, that's a really great answer. Now, for any of our listeners that haven't already started uh, watching the fifth season of Dragons, are there any dragons in the fifth season you think fans should be excited about? Oh, yeah. I think I think we're... Because we're all growing up, we're getting a little bit uh, crazier dragons, uh, and because you know we're we are uh, we're starting to explore the world. Um, so there's the Sandbuster, which uh, leads Hiccup and I to a pretty cool place. Uh, and then I love the Slitherwings because of what they remind me of, which is those little scary dragon or little scary dinosaurs from Jurassic Park too. <laughs> at the beginning of the movie. Nice. Uh, and, you know, with How to Train Your Dragon, I've noticed both in the movies and even in the TV show, there's a number of uh, geek references like that, so I half wonder <laughs> if uh, those dragons were actually intended to be like the dinosaurs. I mean, maybe they just re- maybe you're just reminded of them, but maybe that was actually intentional. I mean, who knows at this point? I wouldn't. I wouldn't put uh, put it past Art and Doug to do something exciting like that. Like, because we we tend to mix uh, we mix in things from uh, this world into the world of Burke constantly. So, you know, I can't say for sure, but they certainly reminded me of that. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's actually funny that we talk about that because I've always been convinced that Heather's double axe uh, is meant to be like Darth Maul's lightsaber from Star Wars. Oh, uh, yeah. Totally. <laughs> no, no one has convinced me otherwise. Not that anyone has <laughs> tried to, but something I like to believe. So I completely get where you're coming from with the dinosaurs. Oh, yeah. And there's uh, there's references all over the place. Sure. Vanahan, for example. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now, for the fans who haven't started watching the fifth season yet, what do you think fans can look forward to the most in the new season? Um, you start to well, first you get the like, uh, you understand who's behind the dragon hunters, which is pretty wild. Um, 
And then I would also say you get to see these characters grow even more. And we're getting to uh, the beginning of the second movie, I believe, right? Yeah. We're getting to the beginning of the second movie. So you are starting to see these characters understand consequence uh, for what they've done and kind of, you know, they've been dragon riding and they were the first to do it, but now it's everywhere. And they're having to deal with it in a way that uh, they didn't really expect, I would say. So you get to see more growth in, the, in these characters that I think we've all kind of grown up with. Absolutely, for sure. That's a really great answer. Um, which would you say, now I know you've done a number of different projects and some of them, have, of course, a lot of you know, on-camera stuff as well you've done. Um, mm-hmm. Which would you say has been the most challenging role in your career so far? Well, uh, you might know of the UK in-betweeners. Uh, I would say in terms of trying to uphold such a torch, Jay Cartwright was a, was a very challenging role. Not because it was hard, but because there was such a uh, body of work before I got to do Jay that existed. And I wanted to do my own take on him and try and bring my own flavor so I'd say maybe Jay Cartwright. It was also one of the most fun roles. Uh, and then Snotlout. I'm not a bully. Jay is also a bully. So I would say probably the two bullies I've played, Jay and Jay and Snotlout. Yeah, I imagine it must be tough, you know, playing characters that are basically the opposite of you as a person. Yeah, it's hard to be mean to your friends. I'll say that. I'll say that. <laughs> Even when you're acting, it's hard. Because... You know, you you can't leave your body. With Snotloud, it's a little bit easier because I don't look uh, quite like Snotloud. But with Jay, you know, when I played him, I certainly looked like him. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Now, my final question for you, Zach. Aside from the new season of Dragon's Race to the Edge, do you have any upcoming acting roles or any other projects that you would like to talk about? Uh, yeah, I've I've started to do um, I started to kind of take a turn and do music. So I have a kind of a one man band called Dead Castles. You can go to deadcastles.com and check out my music. I kind of I, it's very eclectic. I like to do everything from like hip hop to uh, like singer songwriter acoustic to like more like LCD sound system with synth. I've got an album coming out later this winter, and I'll be posting uh, songs on my SoundCloud. So, yeah, check out my music, and um, you can always follow me on Instagram. And then in terms of acting stuff, uh, the new season of Shameless is going to be coming out pretty soon. What else? I think, um, you know, I got some stuff in the pipeline I don't really want to uh, – ruin not ruin what's the word spoil yeah yeah spoil i guess that's that's the that's the word everybody uses <laughs> uh i don't want to spoil anything but uh cool stuff to come no oh, it's really cool well, i'll definitely be sure to keep an eye out for your music and of course the next episodes of shameless for sure so that's all of my questions for you zach it's been a pleasure talking to you on the podcast Well, thank you so much, Rory. You're very welcome. Hopefully we can talk to you again sometime. Yeah, the next time something cool happens, uh, be sure to hit me up. I will for sure. So thanks again for joining us and take care. Bye. Bye. The fifth season of Dragon's Race to the Edge is now up on Netflix. If you want to check it out, make sure to check out our podcast links, check out our website website.everythinggeekpodcast.com slash egp check out our Facebook page www.facebook.com slash everythinggeekpodcast check out our YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash user slash everythinggeekcast check us out on Twitter twitter.com slash everythinggeekp Check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash official everything geek podcast. Check out our Mixcloud profile, www.mixcloud.com slash everything geek podcast. Email us at the following email, everything geek podcast at gmail.com. 
check out our companion podcast, Everything Geek Comic Cast, www.facebook.com slash Everything Geek Comic Cast. Make sure to check out the host's YouTube channels. Mine is www.youtube.com slash user slash Septus Destroyers. Check out Zach Perlman on Twitter, twitter.com slash Zach Perlman. And check out channel 1138 where we broadcast live from www.channel1138.com. Geeks out, everyone. Yeah, we are one of the few shows that they've ordered more of. Uh, you know, you, Netflix is very, plays it close to the vest with numbers and how you're doing. But they were very, they very clearly knew we were doing well enough that they wanted to get two more seasons of 13. We went with no titles on our shows this season. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. I'm just kidding. They're all in ruins. <laughs> no, we, we can definitely let you know if you have some. Yeah, there's, 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 there's a, uh, some good ones. Uh,